In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. No, it's like I'm gearing up for a really exciting horror movie. What's going on, everybody? I have the game, Sam, and welcome to the park. But I'm going to shut up now because apparently there's some narrative stuff going on. I think we're playing as her. Where's Mr. Bear? I had a Mr. Bear. I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Callum? Callum? I've never met a Callum. Stay in the car. I'll go and ask information. Are we in? Okie dokie! I thought there'd be a little more narrative, so... Uh, this is a short, uh, psychological horror game. And when I mean short, uh, it, it's supposed to be about an hour to... Attention, patrons. The park is now closed. Two hours long. Please make your way to the car park at your earliest convenience. Employees, prepare the park for shutdown. Are, are you done? Can I continue? Thank you. So, it's supposed to, uh rely a lot more on storytelling and narrative rather than actual gameplay. So this should be pretty interesting. I want to examine the Alan plaque. was born the day this place opened. Okay. This is his favorite place in the world. A tribute to the untamed heart of Solomon Island and the people who used their talents to bring the dream of Nathaniel Winter to life. May this park be a place where joy and laughter are gathered and used to infect all of those who follow after. Infect is an interesting uh, choice of words there, but let's go ask information to find Mr. Bear. Because uh, whenever I lost my Mr. Bear, I would just cry uncontrollably. So, ooh. Ooh, here's where the psychological stuff starts to happen. Oh, no. Hi, can you help me? Lorraine. Lorraine. I'm having a I'm having a moment. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. How do you know my name? Take a deep breath. And think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. How do you know I Stop. How do you know I'm looking for the teddy bear? I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. Damn it, Callum! Come back here. Alright, in we go. Into the evil haunted park. Right click to shout to Callum. Shouting provides audible and visible Callum, clues to guide you. Where are you going? Catch me, mommy. I I will. But this piece of paper just like had a like a bubble blur on me. For the little ones, for the teens, for the big ones. Place to eat. Okay, so it's just kind of okay, welcome to Atlantic Island Park. Hello, sir. Are you Nathaniel Winter? You kind of look really creepy. I don't like your teeth, really. Oh, there you are, Callum. Get there for mommy, Callum. Come on, Callum. Special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. Mm -hmm. On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. Very true, actually. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. So let's just stay here forever. The park is now closed. Have a safe journey home. Uh, sure. Oh. Earthquake! Bad things! Bad things are happening. Oh. Whoa. Wow, that was fast. I, I thought it would take a moment for the horror to actually settle into this game, but we're, we're already there, apparently. Oh, how the turntables. Run! I have to start running, Callum! Let's start running. God, we're already- we're only four minutes into the game and- Hey, come back here! Come back here, you naughty child! You're gonna get time out when we get home. Callum, come back here! Where did you go? What do you mean, where did you go? He's right there. Don't you dare run into that thing! Don't you- Good, I don't want to go in there. Ha! Whoa. See, that's exactly why I didn't want to go in there. I really don't want to do that. It's kind of a short, uh, small area. I'm assuming we're going to just kind of go around. So, yeah, we're at the House of Horrors. I don't want to go in the House of Horrors. We need to go... Okay, I swore I heard, like, bushes rumbling. Callum! Where did you go? Come on, Callum. Over here! Okay, good. Just stay right there and come back. Whoa! Hey! Oh, it's just birds. We're fine. We're good. Examine shoe. Okie dokie. I 
think this belongs to Kelm. You can't recognize your child's shoe? Doesn't look like it has a lot of support, actually. We need to buy better shoes for Callum. And let's examine this plaque of this squirrel. Okie dokie. Chad the chipmunk, huh? Or chipmunk, my bad. Just a drunk guy in a suit. <laughs> Relatively true. Uh, Chad the chipmunk, worst in class. Chad can't even seem to pass. Chad gets angry, likes to fight. Chad is beaten every night. Chad will have a dead-end job. Chad will die a useless slob. Oh, poor Chad. I'm Chad the Chipmunk, not a squirrel. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. There was a warning about uh, the game having some disturbing uh, themes in the game. And so uh, just kind of be prepared for some... What is that noise? Anyways. Uh, purchase the land or Solomon Island for a pittance, I might add. Uh, whatever old Archie Henderson did to the locals, just the mention of his name and people slamming doors and locking shutters from the moment I arrived on the island. My lawyers had arranged everything in advance, but the realtor still had to come and deliver the keys to me personally. He took it upon himself to offer me another warning. I don't know what you're planning to do with this land, Mr. Winter. But the soil here is bitter with a curse carried from the old country. Old man Henderson, he did terrible dark things. The land remembers, sir. I dismissed him shortly afterwards, mostly amused by his pathetic attempts at warning me off. Uh, I have great vision for this place, and the will to see that vision through to the very end. Atlantic Island Park. Its name is perfect. I cannot imagine it being anything else. This is the start of something amazing, or terrifying, or just absolutely god-awful. Callum. Callum! Yeah, please don't. Okay, great. You're still getting a timeout when we get home. Okay, what is this? This is the... Okay, I keep hearing laughing and I don't appreciate it. Tunnel of... Tales. Tunnel of Tales, not Tunnel of Love? Callum, stay where you are. Where did you go? Okay. Yeah, he's on... Yeah, he's on the swan. Okay, are we gonna... Are we gonna Hi, chase after him? On the swan? Why can't we just wait till he comes back around once he finishes with the ride? <sighs> Do I have to get on this? No, maybe not. Okay. Oh, ride swan! Okay, so I am correct. I have to ride the ride. Which is silly, because we should just wait for Callum to come back around. Okay. I don't know if I really finished my thought earlier that there may be some uh, disturbing... Uh, images or disturbing themes or something disturbing. There was a there was a warning at the beginning of this game, uh, also that this game messes with your sanity. So uh, I mean, it is a psychological horror, and please let nothing jump out of the water at me. Uh, I mean, psychological horror games don't typically have a lot of jump scares, do they? I haven't played a lot of psychological horror games. Near Whoa. a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter. His wife and his two children. Okay. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. Hansel and Gretel story, they were great. Very poor and had very little to bite or sup. Or sup. Okay. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband, we will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. It's just a rock. My wife, I cannot do that, said the man. Oh. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Something bad's gonna happen Hansel in here. Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking, and Gretel began to weep. Uh. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. I guess it's story time. It's kind of a long story, though. Are we gonna really go go through all of it? The next we are. The woodcutter leads Wait a sec, what the hell? Forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice No! And no, it's Chad the chipmunk! No more food. No okay! Hi! Oh, okay, I have no way to defend myself. Don't jump me. Do not jump me. Stay the hell right there. Then follow the trail back to their parents' house. Oh, I can't see you anymore. 
After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting uh. nervous, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. Chad. I want to look behind me morning, so bad. Mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Whoa. Whoa. No thank you. Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. I'm just trying to enjoy the story here. I don't like Chad the Chipmunk. Sneak around. Unable to find the trail home, the children wandered in the forest for three days. Hmm. Hello? The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. Okay, this is like halfway through the story. Like, actually. Nibble, nibble, little mouse. Who is nibbling at my house? An old woman emerged from the house, sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back, for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. It's like super. Ah! God! Once inside the house, the old woman changed. She stuffed Hansel into a cage and put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Ha! Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. That could be taken in two different contexts. Oh boy, did I jump there. Time oh look, there's the end. And poor Hansel refused to eat. Fearing the day that the witch would eat him. I just don't want the Chad the Chipmunk to jump at me. Grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool, the old witch said. The opening is here. And she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel gave the witch a shove, and the old crone tumbled forward. Victory! Into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Yay, Gretel! She freed her brother Hansel, and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled. And the witch was cooked. Delicious. I'm sure that's yummy. And then, because even children can't survive on sweets, whoa! Divided up the body of whoa! The witch whoa! Whoa! Ate her. Whoa! That's not part of the story, is it? I mean, I know there's like different tales, like different versions of like fairy tales sometimes, but really. All right, so I really expected Chad the Chipmunk to come after me. Ah! Uh. I'm 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 sorry. Did you have something to say to me? 
Did you have something to say to me? What the hell was that? Did I just imagine that? Do I have some psychological issues? Or is it actually the park that's evil? Did I imagine Chad the Chipmunk? I have a feeling that this might get a little deep. Alright. I don't like you! I don't! You stupid duck. Swan thing. Callum, Callum where are you? Alright, well, that was hell. Whoa! Okay, wow. Yeah, my son just Emperor turned Gretel. into a demon there. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister. Hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry. Looking for our own house made of candy. Looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. And then you put you push a witch into the oven and eat her. <laughs> Did not see that coming. Okay, Callum. Why are you creepy now? How? Why all of a sudden are you Another creepy? Accident. Oh, hey, hey, easy there. All right, let's just let's just take a roundabout sweep here. Is that a teddy bear? Oh, teddy bear, don't attack me! Ah! Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna read this. Despite the constant interruptions at work, Atlantic Atlantic Island Park will be opening. On time the governor is booked to cut the ribbon so the only real question is whether we have any customers or we will have any customers I'm not truly worried the customers will come out of simple curiosity I deduced what was needed from the band writings of Archie Henderson it's a star am I leaning back and forth while I read this sorry it's astonishing to think that a renaissance of positive emotions uh, resonance, I'm sorry, can be used to uh, fuel such a process. Henderson himself chose to use negative, uh, and that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes. Very soon I will know if this has all been for nothing. Okay, is that Mr. Bear? Because that's just unfortunate. Callum, I found Mr. Bear! Or a Mr. Bear. Callum? Callum? What? Why are you creepy? And I wish, like, on those notes, I wish the writing was just a little, uh, just a little easier to read. Alright, so what, where are we going next? I guess we're going on this thingy. Oh, can I run anymore? Yes, I can. Oh, is that anything? No. Piece of trash? Probably a piece of trash. Stop, Callum! Oh, can we see him? Can we see him? Yes, I can! You just watch me! Where are you, buddy? Where are you? This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. It'd make me dizzy. Oh, perfect. I like rides like these. I think they're fun. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids. We were waiting for our, train, uh, our turn on the ride. Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly, I know. Anyways, the chipmunk man, uh, he was carving and picking away at the ice. At first we thought he was making some animal like a tiger or lion, but as more and more ice fell away when he first looked, it was like a human face smiling out of the block of ice. But the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportions. Something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little bit faster. Like you were prey, and that thing in the ice was the hunter. But then these teenagers walked up, and one of them made a face at the carving, and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit, and then... Well, he went berserk. For a few moments, it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy uh, who had one of the teenagers on the ground, he was stabbing. 
like stab stab stabbing with the ice pick and blood was spraying and people were screaming and Frank and I and the kids and we were dragging them away as fast as we could and the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was that the eyeball of one of those poor kids landed on the ice sculpture making a making the horrible creature look more or less alive perfect what a great report to just leave after a nice day at the park all right Callum where are you okay God, Callum, why are you so creepy? Alright, can, can we ride this ride? I'd like to ride the ride, because apparently we have to ride these rides. Hot! Oh, ride Octatron? Callum, where are you? Alright, let's do it. I can't get on while it's moving. Well, okay, so I have to stop it. Uh, decrease speed. Because we want to do that. Because we want to get on this ride, even though it makes us dizzy. Alright, can we stop it? At the stop. There we go. All right, let's have a little bit of fun over here. Whoop! No, do I have to ride Octatron? Okay, here we go. Okay. All right. Who's ready for a little bit of fun and horror? Wee! I like it so far. Yeah! Oh, it's been a while since I've been to an amusement park. Be fantastic! Oh, the horror! Oh my god, what's gonna happen now? At least there's no storytelling. And we're picking up speed. Who turned on the ride? Why'd we get on in the first place? OH GOD! WHAT THE HELL?! What the hell was that?! You! What the hell?! Oh, uh, don't do nothing. Don't you dare do nothing. Oh, you gone? You gone? What in the hell were you? Is He's gonna be like right around the corner somewhere. Can we get off and just leave and find Callum? Oh, Callum, I hate you. That sounds horrible to hate my own son, but at the- Oh, ho! Oh. Yeah, I see someone was speeding it up. No, don't get me off this ride. Oh, you gone? Okay. Well, that's no good. Well, it looks like we have to worry about more than just a chipmunk. Where are you? Uh, is this where I came from? Where do I go? Ah. Uh, oh, this way. Okay, good. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. Alright, I was gonna see if I could enter there. I think this is like maybe a little diner that they put in amusement restaurants. Ah, uh, I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of the season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists around, so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping, and most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve, see? Even I am starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. At, in the beginning, it was a laugh, Steve. The local lush as Chad, the chipmunk. Child-friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first, it was, it was the little things, like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. But then I saw him at Susie's Diner, still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complain discreetly to park management about the spell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by. And apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him puking up in a gutter outside of Psychol Station. Because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture, those shapes he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me, and he just hung around for a while. 
I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me, sizing me up, eye-fudging me, whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted, and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually, I called my supervisor, and when he came by, Chad, Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again. Laura Henman. Ah! Oh, my God! Oh! No! 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 Okay. Okay. All right. Oh! There hasn't been a jump scare in this game other than the stupid rocks. Oh, what the hell is that sculpture? What the hell? Oh! Okay. Hi! The hell are you? Oh, don't do nothing. Do you want a hug? Okay, that's enough of a hug for you. Okay. Oh, I was reading a nice story. And it and and that has to happen. Bumper cars? Mommy oh, needs to Callum, where are you, by the way? <laughs> uh, you, excuse me? Sounded like you were right behind me. Constant crashes and 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Hey, bumper cars are really fun. I'm sorry, Lorraine, if you never had fun as a child in the 80s. Are, is it, does this take place in the 80s? I think so. Well, it seems like it would take place in the 80s. Okay, can I get onto one of these? Is something going to pop out? Come out, sweetie. Callum? Uh, okay. I just want to get, I just want to do some bumper cars. Ooh, there's something shining over there. Let's get in that one. That one seems like a good one to get into. Or the one that's on, rather. I thought it was, like, something shining. Oh, accident report! Perfect! Brief description of the accident, uh, or incident. During the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attached the load to the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars in into Francis, who was standing, uh directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Uh, describe any injuries. Uh, Francis was killed. Uh, yes. Supervisor comments. Okay, basically Francis was, uh... Ah! Torn asunder! Oh, it's the ghost of Francis! Run! No! No! Move! Move! What the hell, Francis? You almost killed me! Francis? You okay? I mean, I'm just assuming it's the ghost of Francis. I really have no idea what the hell that was. But obviously, we should go check it out, because that's... Oh, God, do I have to go up there? That seems like fun. Hello? Callum, where did you Callum? go? Callum? Whoa. Oh, it's just me. No worries. It's a baby? There's a crying baby. Stay where you are. Stay where you are, crying baby. It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Uh oh. Once, when Callum was very small. Uh oh. I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. That's not good. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. Yeah, no kidding. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. Well, yeah. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she just gets some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. Oh my god. But instead my mouth said, yes, Sheriff. Where are you, Callum? Alright, well, we have that thing right there, but we are out of time for this episode, and things are starting to get heavy. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video. It really helps me out. Also, be sure to leave comments in the comment section and subscribe to me so you can save today with all the other videos that I'll be posting soon. Until the next video, I will see you guys later. Goodbye. It's very nice. Very lovely. I like your home. Yes.